Whenever I think about Italy, I can't help but thinking of a delicious bottle of Italian wine. In our program, Italy, North to South, we're going to be exploring a lot more than just Italian wine. But before I give you a, an overview of our itinerary and some of the things that we're going to see along the way, let me explain how I've designed this program. There are two major components. First of all, I've divided it into North, Central and Southern Italy, which allows us to see the differences between the culture and traditions of these very distinct regions of the country. Secondly, I've allowed for four or five nights in each place, which allows us time to see the major sites and do all the things that tourists do, but also that extra bit of leisure time to sit around, have a cappuccino or a glass of wine and just watch the people going by. Let me now jump right in and show you what's in store. We'll be heading to Italy in the latter part of October of next year. We're just finalizing the dates and they'll be available shortly. Our program will begin as we fly from Canada to Milan. We'll cross the Po Valley to begin in Verona for the first few nights. We'll then head down to Florence in Tuscany. And the final five nights will be in the southern part of Italy in Naples. Our return flight will take us from Rome back to Canada. Our first stop, Verona, is a very underrated city. Its many piazzas, theaters and galleries make this an ideal place to hang our hat for a few days while we explore the region. We'll have a side trip up to Lake Garda, a spectacular lake in the foothills of the Southern Alps. We'll have the chance to spend a full day in Venice, just an hour away by train, to explore its fabled canals and waterways. We'll do a day trip to Mantua, setting of many of Shakespeare's plays and surrounded by three lakes, making it a very compact city center to explore. The second phase of our journey will have us travel to Tuscany and its capital Florence, where we'll spend a few days in this beautiful part of Italy. Florence, of course, is home to such Renaissance masterpieces as Michelangelo's David and the entire Uffizi Gallery featuring exhibits by Botticelli and Leonardo da Vinci. We'll make a side trip to Siena, a 14th century town situated up on a Tuscan hill and known for its medieval brick buildings. But no trip to this region would be complete without a visit to Pisa and its leaning tower, which thanks to restoration work some 20 years ago, is no longer at risk of falling over. We'll have at least a full day to explore Florence and its environs before we head to the third stop on our journey to Naples, situated on the Mediterranean coast and near the famed Mount Vesuvius. Naples is a lively city in and of itself, having some of the world's best opera houses and theatres, but it is also gateway to some of the beautiful southern Italian coastline which we'll visit over the next couple of days. One such visit will be to the beautiful island of Capri, known for its jagged cliffs, its ritzy hotels and shopping, as well as the famous Blue Grotto. We'll also spend a day touring the Amalfi Coast, the region itself a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and known for the picturesque towns of Positano, Amalfi and Sorrento, which are nestled between steep cliffs and the beautiful blue Mediterranean. We'll see Pompeii, an ancient Roman city which was completely buried by a volcanic eruption 2,000 years ago and is now one of the most visited archaeological sites in the entire world. Our trip will culminate in Rome, where we can either stay on for a few extra days on our own or fly back home to Canada. If after all of that, you've now got a hankering to go to Italy, all you need to do is click the button, send me more information. And when we have the itinerary finalized, I'll send you a pamphlet, which includes the detailed day-by-day -day itinerary, as well as the pricing and inclusions. I very much hope to welcome you on our program, Italy North to South in October, 2019.